Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard. Today I am again with a super special <laughs> guest right here and I'm gonna show you the new Xiaomi Fimi Palm right here. This camera arrived some days ago and I actually been testing it really hard so I can tell you everything there is to know about it. Let's start with the unboxing experience. Let's say it's minimalistic because inside the box we'll find the actual camera a little instruction pamphlet, the USB-C cable without the adapter, the wall adapter and some silica gel. That's all you will, you're gonna find. But still, you get everything you need. You pop in an SD card in this bad boy and you're ready to go. Let's talk about the construction quality. Plastic feels really nice, it's sturdy and it's a nice plastic overall. There is not much metal I can see. The bottom is made of rubber which helps don't slide when you put it on a surface. And the actual cover is uh, kind of cheaply made, but it does its job very good. I just wish it will cover the screen when you put it on, because it doesn't. Ports and the interface. In the front you get a nice screen, it's real, super responsive, very very bright. I have to say I don't have any issue uh, viewing it even uh, under direct sunlight. And then you have a 5 position joystick, it's a really cool touch because you can move your gimbal, it's not an analog, so you cannot select the speed at which you move, you can in the menu but it's a fixed speed and you have to keep it like that. And then we have the classic record mode button, on off button and stuff like that. Really minimalistic but still does, does the job. And then you have the touch screen and you can change everything in there. On the side you have a micro USB in and a lanyard hole. On the bottom there is only a USB-C, I've seen online that they listed that there was an audio jack but there is not, but still uh, Xiaomi is making a base adapter so you can plug in your external microphone and also you can use a USB-C to 3.5mm jack adapter to use your external microphone. I just wish that the port was on the side uh, so you can stand it on surface and still power it or use your microphone because that defeats the purpose, but still it's a nice touch. Here there is not much, there is only a microphone hole and on the back there is a classic tripod mount. The only thing is this thing gets in the way if you have really big uh, stoppers because the gimbal gets blocked by it, it's really close to it. I just wish it was at the bottom or like in the bottom like that but I guess that's the only position they could put it. The gimbal is really nice made, it's solid, it works amazing. The only thing is it doesn't spin full 360, it stops and it stops at points, you see, it doesn't go further than this. And But I guess this is to be expected, this is not a big gimbal and they cannot put the connection inside to spin 360, still it does the job. Now let's see how to navigate menus and stuff. And this is your touch screen menu, in the bottom you can see the SD card, you can format it and stuff. If you touch the other corner right here you can change the ISO, the color temperature and that's it, you cannot change the shutter speed. And leave it all on auto, otherwise it makes mess. If you touch at the top you can change the resolution and the frame rate as you can see and if you scroll down you can change between picture quality fine or super fine. Super fine is much better, it produces a, a bigger file size and it just captures more information. Scroll down again and you have color. You can change between natural and f-log. Natural is really saturated and punchy, f-log is a little bit less but still it's usable without uh, coloring. Then, if you scroll down, there is the mic options. You can change between high, low or mute. High is a little bit too high and it captures a lot of hisses, I will um, let you hear that. And low is a little bit too low. I just wish they had a medium <laughs> setting and it was much, much better. And that's it for this menu. When you see the line there, you can just swipe to exit. If you scroll down from the top, you actually have the other menu where you can select the Wi-Fi, lock screen and display size and the brightness. This screen gets really bright. In this other menu, you can change your gimbal settings. Follow mode is the most dampened one and it follows your movement, but slowly. And FPV mode is much faster in that. Pitch lock and it basically locks your pitch. And the full gimbal lock, you can turn it and it actually doesn't move. If you scroll right, you can select your cropping factor. I always suggest you to use ultra wide because the other ones are just cropped in. Then you have camera settings and this camera shoots uh, JPG and uh, DNG. And then you can change the metering mode. And here you can change the video codec between H.264 and H.265. And lastly, we have the lens distortion correction on and off. Gimbal settings, you can change your joystick speed, swipe, follow speed. This is the speed the gimbal follows your movement. 
and then you can calibrate it and adjust the horizon if that messes up. Really, I never actually had to do this. Also, I suggest you removing the beep because it beeps at the beginning of the video and it's really, really nasty. I don't like it. Then if you scroll from the bottom, you can actually see your videos. This thing doesn't have a speaker, so you cannot hear them. If you scroll in the main screen, you can actually go to photo mode. It takes photos, basically really easy. Panorama, it takes multiple photos and then it merges them together. You take a photo and it goes, takes nine photos like this. And then you can merge the photos in the app and get a really big field of view photo. And then if you scroll, you have the time lapse feature. This is really cool because, because you can create hyperlapses. Like you select the first point, then you turn your gimbal, you select the second point, maybe tilt it up and you can select the third point. And once you start it, the gimbal will follow the movements you selected. And this is, this creates a really cool a moving time lapse, super cool function. And then you have the slow-mo function, but really it produces a really cropped image with not much quality. I don't like this function. And then you are back to video mode. The record button, you press it one time, it starts recording. You press two times, it resets your gimbal. If you press it three times, it turns and it actually activates facial recognition. So you can see it's following my face right now. I'm behind the camera so it doesn't see me well, but you can see it's working. And this is really cool to vlog. And also if you press two times, it de deactivates the function. And it also works in reverse. You can touch two times and it activates facial recognition. Also very, very cool, when you turn it off, it positions itself to be put into the cover, like this. And this is basically all the settings for this gimbal. Now I will show you how it shoots and how it sounds. And this is a test video, so you can see and hear what the camera is like. This is 180p, 30 frames per second, and it already gives you a really high bit rate. But if you go to 4K 30, then it gives you 100 megabits bit rate. And my laptop cannot edit that big of videos, so I'm keeping it low. Still, 180p, I tested it, and it gives, him, gives me a really good image quality. Also, 2.7K is fine. Man, I didn't found that much improvement in the three of them so keep the bitrate low it's much better and also the microphone is on high today is a bit windy and i guess the microphone is uh, is kind of good i heard it already but if you can put on some headphones you can hear in the low noises some some sounds like that and that's the actual gimbal moving and i hope xiaomi finds a way to update this camera and actually remove that sound because it's uh, it's kind of it's nasty when you are editing and you have to hear that with a good pair of headphones. If you are watching this on YouTube, you probably ain't gonna hear much about that, but I am, I'm just warning you, there is that sound. If you put the microphone on low, it doesn't go away, but actually the whole microphone gain gets too low for my uh, taste. And it sounds like when you put the GoPro in like a underwater diving case. It sounds muffled, I don't like it. This is much clearer. And today is a really bright day, so the, the quality is not bad at all. And also I'm moving the camera right now. And this is the facial recognition. And it's following me. This feature is really cool. As you can see, if you move, the camera follows you. Now let's go in a shaded area and you can see the camera adapts to it really nicely. And when there is light, this camera works really, really good. The issue is when you go where there is not much light. In fact, now I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. And this is still a kind of lit environment. I mean, there is some light coming from the window and you can see it starts graining a bit in the in the shadow this is not a really good indoor or um, low light performer this camera this camera is meant to be used outdoors where it really shines and it gives you a good quality image and this camera actually is different from a regular camera because it's more like an action camera on a gimbal it has a really wide field of view and it has infinity focus. So basically everything is in focus when you shoot. 
and that's really good because it's a point and shoot you don't have to worry about stuff being in focus and not in focus you can also get really really close and this is like three centimeters from the camera and it doesn't get out of focus super cool and also I love this follow function because even if you go behind stuff it still picks you up look at this now I move I'm moving I'm moving and I'm going behind this tree where they are you see when I come on the other side it still picks me up okay the field of view is really large but amazing system really really well developed and this is a great little camera for vlogging and now you can actually hear that much wind and let me know how it goes because that's a really good microphone right there and it doesn't pick up the wind but this thing if it doesn't pick up the wind that means something this camera is great if you want to vlog in my opinion like you have to go on travel you want to pack light this thing is the size of a pen and it's really really small i love it and i actually will use it when traveling i hope it, i don't break it because i want to tear this apart and actually make a drone out of it i have this idea but then i hope i can reassemble it if not in use or maybe i'm gonna buy a new one and also it's priced really good because it's much less than 200 bucks i will give you a discount in the description and it costs less than a gopro and it costs half of what an osmo pocket does and in some ways this thing is better than an osmo pocket because from for what i've seen the osmo pocket it tries to be a replacement for your camera but it's really not it doesn't produce a, a lot of shallow depth of field and also the image is too narrow maybe they're gonna release a better version soon but for me this thing takes the cake costs less and it, wor it works better and flawlessly for what it does also i have to say xiaomi is really putting out update after update this thing is new but still i had it for five days and three updates were released and in the next episode i'm gonna compare this camera to my smartphone my dslr on a gimbal and then with my gopro to see which shines on which aspect more and that i think is gonna be interesting and then again i'm gonna strip this thing down sadly that's it for today links in description as always stay safe and happy flying bye